Hey there folks, Rinium T here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. In the last part, I got annoyed at people. I mean, we did the copy factory, and now it is time to head to patch 5.2. Old enemies, new threats. Arya, hi, what a pleasant surprise. If you've come to inquire about the Archons, fear not. Master Matoya's treatment has proven effective in stabilizing their corporeal ether. You mustn't grow complacent, however. Potent though these magics may be, they are not without limits. I can only hope they afford us enough time for the Crystal Exarch to complete his work. If only we could go to with you to the first in hell. Pardon the interruption, but I come bearing urgent news. Arya has been far too long, my friends. Forgive me, I don't believe we have been formally introduced. Maxima, former Garlean ambassador, I remain here in Eorzea under the auspices of Commander Alden, offering what counsel I can in the hopes of resolving the present conflict with the Empire. Ah, yes, I have heard stories of a defector from Garlemal. But never mind that. You said you have urgent news. Indeed, as you may have heard, the Imperial capital is in turmoil, and a sizable portion of the Garlean forces have been recalled from the Gimlet Dark. With their numbers so greatly diminished, the, the main host of the Alliance has withdrawn, leaving the Alan Megan resistance to keep watch over the border. And it is there we have welcomed the most unexpected visitor who claims that this de-escalation may belie growing at dangers and unforeseen threats. Commander Alden has arranged for an impromptu meeting to discuss these revelations. He has also requested a representative of the science attend as well, though it was clear to whom he wished I extend this invitation. Now it would seem time is of the essence. Well, you'll not be attending this meeting alone. Though I am not as well versed in the affairs of the city states as our comrades, I see no reason to burden a single scion with all this. Yes, of course. Then we must make for the Alamegan Quarter with all haste. Well, what are you waiting for? Get going, you two. Commander Alden awaits us in the royal palace. If you would follow me, They're here, Commander. And I, for one, am grateful that they are. Told you've been busy since our paths last crossed at the Gimlet Dark. Not that I understand half of it. When the science spoke of other worlds, I'd struggled to describe what I pictured. Mayhap things would seem clearer were I to hear the tale from your own lips. But I'm afraid the situation will not afford us that luxury. I trust you two require no introduction. We meet again, hero of Eorzea. Must we repeat this ridiculous display? I pose no threat to you, though what I come to warn you of very well might. Had he meant to do us harm, I hazard he would have kept to the shadows and brought more than two companions. We need not pretend to be the best of friends, but I hope we can put aside our differences for the present. As you are doubtless aware, Sir Estinian and I cooperated to rid the world of Black Rose in your absence. Mm -hmm. 
Our journey together took us as far as the Imperial Palace, where we witnessed Emperor Varus meet his death at Xenos' hand. Being the sole witnesses to this crime, and in no position to defend our innocence, we were then forced to flee, each pursuing his own avenue of escape. When we were later reunited, Estinian claimed to have encountered an unfamiliar kind of machina during his flight, but to me his description seemed anything but, and upon further investigation I found that I was right. The Empire is developing a new Ultima weapon. What, that Alagon monstrosity? Created to vanquish primals? With which you yourself once thought to conquer Eorzea? The same. In my foolishness, I sought to harness its power, and became the Asian's pawn in so doing. But you know as well as I how that tale ended. The weapon itself, excavated from beneath this very city, was destroyed ere we could fully unravel its secrets. And that should have been the end of it. But unlikely as it sounds, the Empire's efforts to recreate it have somehow borne fruit. Primarily through secret research conducted by the Seventh Imperial Legion, it would seem. Wait, the Seventh was all but annihilated at Cartano, along with its Legatus. Indeed, few survived. The Seventh, as it is now, has little in common with the Legion led by Vandanus, and its leadership has changed hands several times since. Precisely how this project has continued despite such turmoil, and under whose auspices, remains a mystery. What we do know, however, is that a number of prototypes have been produced, and that one of them is on its way to Eorzea. We attempted to stop it, but it was all we could do to slow its progress, so we resolved instead to bring you warning. And right glad are we that you did, though it soundly dashed our hopes that tensions might ease at last. As it is, we've begun to strengthen our presence in the Gimlet Dark, and are assembling a force to meet the coming threat. A force with you in its vanguard, I hope. Before you say anything, I know full well you have pressing concerns of your own. Your comrades remain in peril, and I would not ask you to forsake them. But the fact remains that you, and you alone, have faced the Ultima Weapon and emerged victorious. We need you. And so, when the time comes, if your comrades can spare you, I bid you lend us your strength. I've assigned an officer to await your word. The Asian's downfall was to be the work of my remaining days. But it was my hand that kindled these flames, and I cannot allow them to spread any further. I will do what I must to see this mistake consigned to history once and for all. Even if it means begging your aid. The fates will enjoy the irony, even as I endure the ignominy. I too shall make for the border and offer my skills, meager though they seem in such company. Mayhap we shall meet there anon. Though we can ill afford to ignore the coming of a new Ultima weapon, our friend's plight grows ever more precarious, and none save you can join them in the first. I only hope you are not forced to make a choice. Hmm, the 
this doesn't sound suspicious to the like major side quest at all now does it as ever the way forward is paved with difficult decisions we can all afford to ignore the threat of a new ultimate weapon but with each passing day the plight of the silence grows ever more perilous you cannot stay for uh, the briefing of the on the ultimate weapon. I will not stop you. I only ask that you confer with me before returning to the first. Dun dun dun. So we'll take care of that after the story. The way home. I think you're ready to return to the first. Then I would ask that you apprise the others of recent events here in the source, namely Xenos' return and the developments of a new ultimate weapon. As for the bodies, then you may assure them Master Matoya and I will continue doing what we can to keep their corporeal ether sta stable. Safe travels, Arya. I hope to see you in the other Scion soon. You've come at the most opportune time, my friend. I've made something of a breakthrough in my research on the soul and the means to return the Scions home. The rest of you, too, have been making good use of your time. Built hidings from the source, you say? <sighs> then will some of the others that we might all be apprised of the situation. Now that we are all here, what news from the source? A new Ultima weapon? We must count ourselves lucky that Gaius has pledged his assistance. While this is indeed a worrying development, I think the state of the Empire as a whole greater grounds for concern. With the Emperor slain and Xenos returned, it is impossible to predict how matters will unfold in Garlemald. The Ultima weapon may be but the first of many unpleasant surprises. The situation beareth closer observation, of that there is no doubt, and doth compound our need to return unto the Source. Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianger and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. We set out to create a crystalline container retaining the more useful properties of white waracite, but without its regrettable limitations. And, after a good deal of trial and error, we made one. An arc for soul and mind both that will allow your incorporeal self in its entirety to be ferried between worlds. A spirit vessel, if you will. However... However? Though the vessel is possessed of the requisite qualities to hold mind and memory, it wanteth yet for a means to receive of them. For that, we must needs imbue it with the Exarch's innate gift. A gift that lives on only through the blood of the Allegan Emperors, which certainly does not flow within Aurasite or any other crystal. Just so, my lady. The blood serveth as a conduit of sorts. In its absence, memory cannot pass from mind unto mind, nor from flesh unto crystal. That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance, so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. 
As well you should be. The Allegan's body of etherological research is extraordinary. I can scarce believe it the work of ages past. But its underlying principles are not so very different from those of my own field of study. Given time, we will find the answers we seek. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home. My apologies. I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. No. I had hoped to speak with the Warrior of Darkness. But there is no need to cut short your meeting on my account. I will be waiting outside. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless... she didn't want to. Perhaps I might accompany you. Though I am woefully ill-qualified to assist in the Exarch's research, I may yet be of some use to Lena. My fair share of scholarly research, it will be good to step outside for a spot of fresh air. Now then, shall we go and speak with Lena? We have little time, so it will be brief. A senior has been sighted in Lakeland, and I ask for your assistance in slaying it. A senior? I had heard some few yet remain from ap after the night had returned, but perhaps we should call the others. That will not be necessary. It's only a single senior. A simple task for our guard, I should think. That said, I believe fighting alongside the Warrior of Darkness would be a valuable experience for them. Peace can lead to complacency, and they gain nothing from an easy victory. But you do not under underestimate your foes, however harmless they may seem. My men would do well to learn from your example. Why not Alpha now? Can't be serious! Come now, Arya! What could be more inspiring than by along the alongside the Ridden Elm warrior of darkness herself? Excellent, then let's make for a job. If you wait here a moment, I will gather gather the others. You may not remember, but you have met these soldiers once before, though only in passing. Long have they awaited the opportunity to fight at your side. I was at that store the day after the senior's attack. If you and yours hadn't come along, I'd likely have stepped through. I wouldn't have been alone. Your courage and selflessness is something we all aspire to. I, too, was there that terrible day. My friend was transformed into a senior before my very eyes. I had no choice but to cut her down. The thought of returning to the field and holding away again. It fills me with dread. There is no way to... 
But that is no way to honor her or my comrades. And so I have returned. I swear I will not let you or anyone else down from this day forward. A uh, pleasure to meet you, Mess. Truly, it seems like only yesterday I watched as you took fly a stride in the morrow to go and save the Oracle. Strange to think the Yomoran soldiers we once locked blades with are now on our side, but we will do our utmost to keep the peace here in Lakeland. Who does it seem to be a missing one? My apologies, Captain Lena. An elderly gentleman asked that I escort him to clear him out. It took longer than I anticipated. I'll not begrudge your desire to help those in need, but a soldier must be punctual, especially when you play host to honor guests. It won't happen again. The name's Taylor. I'm sure you don't remember, but we met once before in the infirmary. I see delivering message to the Exarch and the Warrior of Darkness. Little did I know I was already talking to her. Don't give up. Don't give in. I keep those words close to my heart, and the boundless, beautiful skies above serve as a reminder of their importance. My friend got to see a nice return shortly before he passed. He left this world with a smile, satisfied with the glimpse of what was to come. But there are countless others who weren't so fortunate. They gave their lives for the promise of a future they'll never know, and so it falls to us to do everything we can to fulfill that promise. No matter what happens, we won't give up. We won't give in. Your heroism has inspired all our, our guardsmen in much the same manner. Our scouts at the Northern Staging Point have not had the pleasure of meeting you in person. Let us not keep them waiting. Did you slay this eater? Your orders were to await the main force before engaging. No, Captain. It wasn't us, I swear it. A man came out of nowhere and cut it down before we knew what was happening. By himself? Certainly it is no light warden, but nevertheless. It's true. Felt it with a single swing of his axe he did. I've never seen anything like it. So I says to him, Who are you, the warrior of bleeding darkness? And he says, no, I'm a warrior of light. And that was it. Buggered off as quick as he came. A warrior of light? Why would someone go around calling himself that, though? It was those bastards who caused the flood. I mean, if you were going to pretend to be anyone, it'd be her, the warrior of darkness. I didn't know. It's an honor. Since the Eater is no longer a threat, our work here is done. Return to your posts. I had hoped to fight at your side today. But I'll continue to follow your example, and may we meet again. I apologize for the wasted journey. It seems I overestimated the threat. As for this warrior of light, I do not know who would be brazen enough to take that mantle for his own. Whatever it may once have meant, it is forever tainted by the association with the Flood. The Exarch told me the truth of Ardbert and his comrades' deeds, and I am aware they played some part in your own triumph. But to most, they are synonymous with the calamity that befell this world. Still, 
If this man is minded to destroy Sin Eaters, I may forgive him his unfortunate choice of alias. But that is neither here nor there. I thank you for accompanying me. With that concluded, shall we return to the Crystarium? There is a proposal I should like to make. Forgive me. There is one more thing. A personal concern of mine. I had hoped you might have a moment to speak privately. Take your time. I shall go on ahead. I will not mince words. This matter concerns the Exarch. Though his countenance belies his age, his demeanor never has. He has seen more than any man should and grown ever more weary with time. But I see I give the wrong impression. While it is true he attempted to open a letter with the salmon fillet the other evening, we are not here because I suspect his mind is deteriorating. Nor do I believe him to be so maddeningly unconcerned by the prospect of his own death as he once was. Indeed, the opposite is true. It is for this reason that I seek your advice. Since he returned from the Tempest, the Exarch is not as he was. He seems a different man. A younger man. I know not the details of his research, but when I saw him at work recently, there was a glint in his eye that I had never seen before. He looked... happy. It was as if he had peered into the future and for the first time... found joy there. Though it gladdens me to see him thus, I wonder if I should not keep my distance. I fear that my presence will only anchor him to the past, remind him of all the pain that came before. He's lost without you, you know, and he misses you already. He... Are you sure? Then perhaps we might remain as we were. As we have always been. What a relief. In that case, I will have to speak with him about the amount of time he is spending at work. This research is important, I know. But if he refuses to consider his own health, I will have to consider it for him. Facing the truth. I will not keep you. You and your comrades have much to discuss. I will see the others back to their posts. The others were quite shocked to hear of what we found in Lakeland. But now that you're here, there's a proposal I should like to make. I've been spending a great deal of time in the Cabinet of Curiosity, and of late I have noted more and more people perusing books on history, the years leading up to the Flood in particular. I suspect they wish to know more about the Warriors of Light, as well they should, but nearly everything I've come across described in the Sin Eaters are worse. Regardless of whether or not this Warrior of Light is who they claim to be, I worry that their sudden appearance in conjunction with this renewed interest in their predecessors may lead to growing unrest and fear. The people of Crystarium seek the truth. I say we give it to them. I too can attest to the falsehoods found within myth 
full many of the cabinet's tomes, with nary a mention of the noble deeds of Ardbert and his comrades. To be fair, they bear some responsibility for the flood. But when the tale is to be told is told again and again over the course of a century, I'm not surprised to see their roles distorted and them painted as villains. Were it not for the records stored within the Crystal Tower, I would have had no reason to question the narrative. Unfortunately, that knowledge was of no use, for when I first arrived here in the first, their reputation had already been irreparably tarnished. That said, there still remained those who worked tirelessly to defend their good name in those early days following the flood. Considering all the good they had done, I find it a wonder they needed defending at all. They brought to justice the man who misused my knowledge to bring about the fall of Wilbert. That such heroes could be spoken of in the same breath as sin eaters is absurd. Under normal circumstances, I would agree. But as time passed, those who knew firsthand of their deeds dwindled. In the end, only one truth remained. That they were the cause of the flood. With the world on the brink of oblivion, it was all too easy for the warriors of light to become villains deserving only of resentment and hate. At that point, the truth mattered little. It would not change their lot. Thanks to all of you, however, their lot has changed, and now they may heed the long-forgotten truth. You claimed it was Ardbert who helped you overcome him itself, correct? Such a revelation would do well to sway the hearts of those who knew him only as a villain. I shared this with a select few, but one and all must be told of his sacrifice. To say... To that end, I say we proceed with Alphino's plan. We call together the people of the Crystarium, recount to them the, tr the true tale of the warriors of light and the flood that followed in their wake. Well, what say you, Arya? Do I have to do the talking? <laughs> I wish it had been done sooner. In hindsight, I agree, but like better late than never, no? Exar, might I ask you to continue working with Beckluk on our means of returning home? The rest of us will see a gathering of the people of the Crystarium in the etc. We have to reach out to anyone and everyone who might be willing to lend an ear. With any luck, work will spread and more will accompany them. I guess. So they're all over the place. I know this can't be. Surely there is at least one book here that does not cast the warriors of light in their teeth in such a negative light. Oh, Arya, forgive me. The Cabinet of Curiosity has been bustling with visitors of late, but I fear our repository lacks for the knowledge they seek. People wish to know the truth of the flood of the warriors of darkness. I have searched high and low, but alas, every account portrays them as no better than sin eaters, abominations worthy only of scorn and resentment. I know they were not always judged so harshly, yet I can find no proof, and I dare call myself a librarian. You may address the people and tell them the truth of the warriors of light, of the flood? How wonderful. You regaled me with the tale once before. I should love to hear it again. On you may be assured I will not come alone. Well, well, what a coincidence. I was just reading over a letter I received from Grinnell to not long ago. Since the visitor from the Crystarium found him at the bottom of the ocean, and that she inspired him to reach new artistic heights. Well, I can only think of one person capable of both feats, though I'd say the latter is far more impressive. To think fate could bring the two of you together in such a place. I'm sorry, you mean Exarch didn't tell us the whole story of the Warriors of Light? Well, whatever he's left unsaid, I'm all the ears. Gosh, is there even a fast way to this one? Not really. Arya! My what a wonderful surprise, though I hope your being here doesn't mean someone's been hurt. Thanks to you, I've had far fewer patients coming through my door of late, which is a shame, come to think of it. I've had fewer opportunities to test my new medicines. Just, of course. It's actually been quite pleasant to have a few moments to myself now and again. 
which reads about the words of light, but the excerpt is already spoken with me about them. Well, if there's more to the tale, I'd very much like to hear it. Come to Brawl's Wares in the markets, have you? Well, I can guarantee you'll have no trouble finding what you need, whatever it may be. Under Yulmore's new leadership, Trey has never been more prosperous. Where is it? What is that fellow from Daedalus Stoneworks has taken over as mayor? Did he really? Little wonder if business is booming the way it is. Imagine it won't be long before all of Norvrent reaps the benefits. But you've not come to talk about the market. Something on your mind? I see. The expert did mention they had something to do with your returning the night to Norvrent. Alright, consider my interest peaked. Well, well, to what do I owe the pleasure? Whatever it is, I ask, must ask you be brief. Within that return, visitors have been flocking to the Crystarium. I find myself too busy by half. I don't mind it, though. Seeing the stairs so full of life and excitement, well, I can almost forget the flood ever happened. The truth about the words of light, but you already told me all there is to be- No, didn't you? Well, if there's more to the story, I'd love to hear it. Maybe then I can complete with Ciela and regaling patrons with stories of their heroism. Perhaps I'll even inspire a few aspiring adventurers. There you are. Between the four of us, I dare say we've swept the Crystaria from top to bottom. Now we need but wait for the people to gather. Yes, this looks to be nearly everyone. Let us begin, shall we? Though I am usually the first to hold forth at such events, I think on this occasion that honor should fall to you. They would be more inclined to take the word of the Warrior of Darkness. Indeed. In light of the subject matter, who better than thee to speak these truths? Warriors of Light did all that? So they never... I mean, they only ever wanted to help. And when everything they'd done turned to ash, they still carried on. They gave everything to stop the Flood. First their lives, then their souls. And they managed it too, in the end. They saved us. And we... Curse their names. This should go a long way towards clearing the air. I take it I'm not imagining this then. I definitely see something. 
You don't think it's a ghost, do you? Nay. Yonder standeth no bloodless apparition, but a warrior of light and darkness both. Ardbert. What in the world? It's you! The one who slew the Eater! That it should be the warrior of darkness who brought the truth to light. You've saved me a fair bit of time. Though I have a few words of my own to say, if I may. People of the Crystarium! I am Ardbert. One of those you know as a warrior of light. That's impossible. You should be dead. Aye, that I should. But as the world has been given you life, so too have I. I know not why I and I alone have been gifted this chance. But I do know this. Only by the will of the star itself could such a miracle come to pass. The hero who stands before you now, the warrior of darkness, is not of this world. And the day will come when she must return to her home. But this land is our home. And if it is to remain so, now and forevermore, it is we who must protect it. The time to rely on saviors from afar has passed. It is you who must rise. You who must become the new warriors of light. What? Us? Warriors of Light? <laughs> None of us were born heroes, my friend. I was only ever a man with a thirst for adventure. But wherever my journeys took me, I was invariably confronted with the same choice. To lend what aid I could to those in need, or not. And I always chose the former. Any one of you could do the same. All you need is the will to help your fellow man and the resolve to see it through. From thine own lips did we learn of Ardbert's fate, and by thy countenance I gather thou art not inclined to recount thy testimony. Yet whosoever this man may be, his words hold truth and resonate with the citizenry besides. For us to voice our doubts here and now would serve but to sow disquiet. For better we retired unto the ocular and there discuss this matter in private. Go. I will stay here and watch. So, that is a warrior of light of the first. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. As far as I was able to discern, that was indeed Artbert. It has been a long time, but not that long. Could he truly have been resurrected as he claims?
No. Absolutely not. Ardbert did entrust his very soul unto thee. I see no reason to question thy judgment. Nor I. To my eyes, your ether burns as brightly as the day you slew Emmett Selk. That is proof that he is with you still. Yet that which standeth now before the people is far more than a passing imitation. I am reminded of the cardinal virtues, though a sin eater he is not. Which leaveth but one plausible explanation. That he is an Asian. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulmore by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the Virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Assuming, then, that this is indeed the work of an Asian, my mind inevitably turns to the last remaining paragon to survive the Sundering. Elidibus. That Xenos hath reclaimed his own flesh is known. Thus, evicted from his borrowed form, and cognizant no doubt of Emmet Selk's failure here in the first, it is quite possible the emissary chose Ardbert for his next vessel. Inhabiting the flesh of the fallen? My, that is unsavory. And they do this often, you say? Verily. For they possess no corporeal forms of their own. In what one may term their natural state, none save those gifted with the Echo can perceive them. Indeed, when Elidibus intruded upon the Waking Sands, his presence did go unmarked by all save Minfilia and the Warrior of Light. On that occasion, I myself remained ignorant of his coming until after his departure. It was only at a later juncture, when he deigned to appear before me in borrowed flesh, that I was finally able to take the measure of him. In such puppetry do the Asians engage when they seek to influence the course of history. And they have gained much by it. Emmet Selk single-handedly built the Galian Empire in this manner, while La Hebrea came close to conquering Eorzea, having taken possession of Thancred's living body. Yet it must needs be noted that the Asians cannot avail themselves of all mortal vessels. For were they able to do so, none would serve as a better pawn than our own redoubtable champion. Mayhap the blessing of light shieldeth Hydelin's chosen from Asian influence. Or mayhap other forces are at work. We cannot say for certain. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Is it not peculiar then that Arbert's mortal remains should be susceptible, given that he was once a warrior of light? Or did the final departure of his soul make it possible, perhaps? Regardless, to hear an Asian use him to call forth new warriors of light boggles the mind. Elidibus hath ever been an enigma, his ostensible purpose being to preserve the balance between light and dark. When he made overtures towards me, however, I was afforded a glimpse behind the mask of the self-appointed emissary. I shall not defend mine actions, 
undertaken in pursuit of a better understanding of our foe as either wise or prudent. Nevertheless, what little I did glean may now prove useful. Elidibus possesseth a subtle mind, practiced in the art of manipulation. That he coax this star's most valiant heroes as far as the source with naught save half-truths is no trifling feat. And now I believe he doth employ his skills once more to some as yet unknown end. Though naught is certain, should my suspicions prove true, we shall have need of all our wits if we are to uncover and thereafter thwart his plot. Agreed. Tis plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements, as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. His performance appears to have concluded. What now? Go back out and follow him? would appear Master Alfino already hath pursuit in mind, and I suspect one pair of eyes shall better serve our cause than half a dozen. Let the rest of us maintain an inconspicuous distance, for the present at least. Spell the falsehood surrounding the warriors of light in their actions prior to the flood. Though I must say, the reappearance of Arbor, or rather one who appropriated his identity, was a rather curious development. He is an imposter of that, there is no doubt. But to the masses, he will appear as a hero returned from the grave. After the warriors of light were laid to rest in Yulmore, the people prayed fervently for the gods to deliver them from their plight. Pray that these fallen heroes be born again for their sacrifices. What bitter irony. I for one would like to know why Arbor urged the people to become warriors of life themselves. Ere we take action, we must needs ascertain his intent. Let's pray that Master Alphino return soon with that most essential knowledge. For now, I think it best to apprise the anchor than read of our efforts. When we do confront Arbor, we shall no doubt have need of their strength. Agreed. I think it's prudent we all take measures to prepare for what's to come. Beck, Luke, and I will continue our research into how we might improve the spirit vessel that it might one day carry you home. Hmm. I think it is time I return to the Great Wood. Until now, everything we have learned of the Ascians has been handed to us at their leisure. But that was one of Emmett Selk's unique failings. I have no reason to think Elizabeth will be as forthcoming. Fortunately, I received word from Fano that heretofore un unexplored chambers have been recently discovered deep within the Kitana Ravel. Alamed believes the relics within tell of a great calamity that befell an ancient civilization, that of the Asians, perhaps. It may lead us to the truths we seek. Hmm, would you care for company? I'm gonna dream of going without you. When you are ready, make her fan Alma and her sisters will be expecting us. Then let's be about our task. Pray give my regards to the V's.
already are. Welcome, Allies of Bronca. We have accomplished much since last you came. With the Light Ford and Dead Ends minions dispersed, we have at last reclaimed our hunting grounds near Rectica Falls. It was there that we discovered more ruins. Although we ran afoul of no traps while exploring its halls, we determined that the innermost chambers were warded by magic. We all were in agreement. Before any investigation could proceed, you should be summoned. We are grateful that you did. From what you told me, I strongly suspect that the wisdoms, wisdom my comrades and I seek can be found within. This wisdom could prove invaluable, for we may soon face a foe whose greatest asset is our ignorance. I see. It is good that you have come, for Ronka was once home to the greatest of weapons, knowledge and understanding. And it's our duty to ensure you and yours do not want for either. That said, we must proceed with caution. To have reached the innermost chambers, unmolested suggests that the more formidable deterrent yet lies within. Come now, surely any threat sleeping within the ruins pale in comparison to those we have faced thus far. This is not a game, sister! You should not be so eager to run headlong into danger! Alan, who is pining for the turn of our allies, will be my adventure into the ruins, clutching your staff at night, wishing it were. You promise not to tell! Then I suggest we be going. Get back here! Remind me, exactly how old are you and your sisters? On second thought, perhaps it's for the mother that I do not know. Pray forgive their overzealous nature. None save we three have been privileged to escort you and yours into the ruins and bear witness to its secrets. Their hearts now burn with curiosity that is not easily satiated. Please, you need to apologize. As a seeker of knowledge myself, I understand full well their enthusiasm. And if not for your sedulous uh, efforts to protect the ruins, we would not be afforded this opportunity. Speaking of which, I believe I've kept you away from the ruins long enough. Come, let's make for the Kitana Rabble. Solo instance! Okay, fine. Next time we will do the solo instance and continue with the 5.2 story. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing if you really enjoyed it. Consider supporting the channel. Our also work really helps to keep being content like this and more. You can find the links for that in the description along with links to me on social media. So thank you again for watching. Excuse me. Thank you again for watching and until next time, this is Rhinium T signing out or trying to sign out or something. Something.